Okay, so in this next video, uh, in the theory of probability, we are continuing with our discussion of transformations of bivariate random variables. Okay, so what we want to do is we, uh, we've, well, firstly we've said we've got a point uv in here, and we found its corresponding point xy, which was mapped onto it uh, by this transformation g. Our task now is to work out what the inverse image of this box is. What is the area, basically? What is the corresponding area of this box? If we transform it back into this probability space, what's its area? What's the ratio between this area and, and the area in here? But, so basically, let me just draw it out. Uh, if we uh, if we um, transform this box back into here, then there is no guarantee that it's going to end up as a box anymore. However, if you make the sizes, the side lengths of this box very, very, very small, then uh, then approximately this function g, this transformation, will be approximately a linear transformation. If you make it really, really small, it will approximately be a linear transformation. So, uh, what uh, what it will be transformed onto is a tiny little parallelogram, basically. Approximately. You can approximate that it's going to be transformed onto a tiny little parallelogram. So, we need to try and find the area of that parallelogram, basically. And as with the case of at single random variables, the function g was defined going from here to here. So what it's easier to do is take a little box in here, transform it, and find out what it's transformed into there, and basically take the ratio between those two areas and basically just divide by it if you want to transform the opposite way. And this all works because if you go really, really small, uh, this function, this G transformation, is approximately a linear transformation. So um, all the derivatives approximately become true, basically. Okay, right. So uh, let's discuss this in more detail then. So we have, uh, we have this, uh, we have R two here, R two. And we have this mapping G, which is mapping you onto, again, it's mapping you onto R2. We have some point, little x and little y here, which is mapped onto some corresponding point over here, which is UV. Now we have some, we, what we're going to say is we're going to start with a little box in this probability space and work out what it's transformed into this on, in, onto in this probability space. The reason we're doing that is because the g function is defined going this way. We're doing the exact opposite of what we were doing before. And before we were taking a box in here, what the actual question we're trying to work out, remember, is we've got a little box in here and we're trying to turn it back into a box in here or a parallelogram in here. But actually, what the way we're going to work it out is we're going is basically say we're going to start with a little box in here, transform it into here, find the ratio, and then just say that the ratio going backwards is one over that basically. Okay, so we've got some little box here. Uh, so this little box of uh, side lengths delta x and delta y basically. Delta x and delta y. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is this is going to be transformed onto some parallelogram, basically. If you, if you, if these side lengths are very, very small, then you can approximate this function in this region around x, y as being a linear transformation, and therefore these, this box, and any linear transformation will transform a box onto a parallelogram. Uh, so that's why we can make that approximation if delta x and delta y are very small. So what we need to do is this box is bounded by two vectors, this vector here and this vector here, and we need to work out what those vectors are and what they transform onto, because this delta x vector is going to be transformed onto this one here, and this delta y vector is going to be transformed onto this one here. So let me just highlight that fact. So uh, here, this is the delta y vector. This is what it's going to be transformed onto there. And the delta x vector here is going to be transformed onto this vector here. So, if we want to work out the area of this parallelogram, what we need to do is work out what these vectors are transformed onto, and then just take the cross product in here, which will give us uh, the area of that parallelogram spanned by those two vectors. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, so, uh, this vector in here, uh, if we Extrap if we say what this vector is, it is delta x in the x direction, and it's 0 in the y direction. This vector in here is 0 in the x direction, and delta y in the y direction. So those are just those two vectors. Now, how do we transform vectors, but it, it, how do we transform vectors between, um, between, um, 
spaces like this uh, when we have just an arbitrary function here. Well, this is where you use the fact that it is a very, very, very tiny little vector. And if it's a tiny little vector, then approximately, we can approximate this as a linear transformation. So if we want to work out what does delta x become in the probability space, then what we all, all we need to do, basically, is uh, the way we're going to work this out is we're going to take the two points at the end of the vector. So uh, del this delta x vector, basically, if I draw it out here, oh dear, it needs to be horizontal, doesn't it? It has two end points, basically, here. And then what we're going to do is the way we're going to work out what this vector goes on to in this other probability space is we're going to work out what do those two points go to. So let's say this point here, which is our point x, y, we know it's going to go on to uv. This point here is x plus delta x, y, and we want to know what is that point going to go on to, and then if we just take the vector joining those two, that's what this vector is going to be transformed onto. So let's work out what that is, basically. So, uh, what is this point going to be transformed onto? Well, uh, it's going to be transformed onto um, uh, if, um, if we, uh, we need to expand what this function is, basically. G uh, has two components, because G, remember, is taking in an ordered pair, and it will map out another ordered pair, basically. So, what you can really do is split G into two functions. You can split it up into uh, U of X and Y, so the U component, the X component in this, pro in this um, R2 space over here, so this is R2, um, is dependent on both your x and your y position, and your y component is also dependent on your x and your y position, basically. Okay, uh, so uh, this uh, value here is going to be u of x plus delta x uh, and y, and it's going to be y of x plus delta x and y. So it's just we're just putting in, uh, this is an abstract function, and now we're just uh, putting in the values, basically, to get this point. So, if we uh, subtract off, um, if we subtract off this point, then we'll get the vector difference between them. So the vector difference, this vector here, is basically going to be u evaluated at x plus delta x, y, minus u evaluated at x and y, which is the u, u component at this point, uh, d and uh, the uh, y component in here is going to be v evaluated at x plus delta x, and y minus v evaluated at x and y basically. So that's going to be this vector, this dif this uh, difference vector here basically. So that is this vector here. Okay, uh, right. Well, if delta x is very, very small, we can approximate these things uh, by the derivative. So remember the definition of the derivative of u, the partial derivative of u with respect to x is equal to the limit as let's say as delta x goes to zero of u at x plus delta x y minus u evaluated x and y divided by delta x. So basically, uh, this is the limiting ratio between the change in the x component here uh, divided by how much you change x by. So you change x by a tiny little amount. You work out how much does your uh, x component in this probability space, uh, sorry, in this R2 space change, and you divide that by how much you changed x, and you take the limit of that as delta x approaches zero, so it gives you that limiting ratio. So if we want this, then it is approximately equal to delta u, del u del x uh, times by delta x. So that is approximately equal to this uh, when delta x is very small. And similarly, this is approximately equal to del y, uh, sorry, del v uh, del x times delta x. So basically, what we get is that this tiny little vector here is um, is going to be, uh, so if I, um, I'll write it here, this vector is approximately going to be, if I write it in column notation to be fitting with this, uh, with my original notation up here, this delta x vector is going to become uh, del u del x delta x times del v del x delta x. Okay, so that's given us this little pink vector here. So that I will uh, circle with the pink highlighter to show us that that is the pink vector. Okay, so now I want to work out the orange vector. So I want to work out what's the corresponding vector for the um, delta y. Okay, so if I change delta y, similarly, so we have this point here. So we go up to now x um, and y plus delta y. So this is our point up here, basically, uh, zoomed up. And again, uh, this, uh, this point here, this y, uh, this x 
uh, this x, y plus delta y point is going to be mapped onto some point over here. And if we want to work out what this vector becomes, all we need to work out is what this vector is here. So the difference between the image of this point and the image of this point, basically. Okay, uh, so again, uh, that vec this point here is going to be uh, u evaluated at x and y plus delta y, and uh, v evaluated at x, y plus delta y, basically. Okay, so if we want to work out what this difference vector is, we take the difference of this point and this point here. So again, what we're going to end up with is something very similar to this. So we'll get uh, u evaluated at x, y plus delta y minus u evaluated at x, y. And then the y component is going to be v, uh, well, the v component, I should say, is going to be v evaluated at x and y plus delta y. Uh, minus v evaluated at x and y. And again, if delta y is very small, this is approximately equal to, and I'll put it in column notation now, uh, del u del y times delta y and del v del y delta y. So this component here uh, is approximately equal to this, this bottom bit, and the other component, this one here, is approximately equal to this top bit if delta y is very, very small. So, we get, basically, that this is this orange vector, so I should circle it in orange. Okay, so, we now have uh, vectors, basically, uh, for these two portions of this parallelogram here. So we have this vector, this orange vector, and this pink vector. So if we want to work out what the area of this is, all we need to do is now cross-product these two things. So, um, let's do that. So we need to, cro and take the modulus, obviously. Uh, the cross product will give us another vector. Uh, what you then need to do is take the modulus of that. So uh, if we take uh, del uh, u del x delta x, which is this pink vector, and then it's got del v delta, delta del x delta x, and then we want to cross product that with um, del uh, v, um, del, sorry, del u del y delta y, del v del y delta y. Okay, uh, so uh, the cross product is defined in three dimensions, strictly speaking. What we should do is therefore add in the zero in the y components like, the, like so, uh, and then we do apply the formula that this is um, i j, k, it is the determinant of this matrix, so uh, this is just how you work out cross products. So um, if you want to work out the cross product of this with this, you put this vector in on this second row, so you have del, uh, in fact I'll start using the other notation, u partially differentiated with respect to x, so that's just another notation, and then we've got delta x, v partially differentiated with respect to x times delta x, zero, and then we've got uh, u partially differentiated with respect to y times delta y, and v partially differentiated with respect to y, delta y, and then zero in the uh, z component. Right. So basically, uh, we start off. Uh, we take by taking the determinant of this. We say, okay, we'll cover up this. Take the determinant of this. That's determinant is zero. So we're going to get zero in the i component. Uh, so remember how you do determinants. You split it up into i. And you take this one, and then you take the determinant of its minor, which is the determinant of v partially differentiated with respect to x, delta x, v partially differentiated with respect to y, delta y, zero. Then we have the j component. We put a minus there because we're going to have to swap uh, the order of this with the order of this one uh, because you're going to have to do one row interchange, basically, to get this in the right position. So you put a minus there, j times the determinant of its minor, which is v, uh, sorry, u uh, partially differentiated with respect to x, delta x, zero, uh, u partially differentiated with respect to y, delta y, zero. So what I'm doing, basically, is I'm saying, okay, uh, in front of the j component, you put, you cover up those bits, uh, you cover up the row that j is in, you cover up the column that j is in, and you take the minor, which is these bits here, which is what this matrix here is. Uh, the i one, we did the exact same thing. We covered up its column, its row, and took the determinant of its minor, and then we finally get plus the uh, final component, the k, and then we cover up its column, its row, and take the determinant of its minor, which is u, x, delta x, 
uh, v partially differentiated with respect to x, delta x, oh dear, uh, u partially differentiated with respect to y, delta y, v partially differentiated with respect to y, delta y. Okay, so uh, we now need to work out what this is. Well, uh, the determinant of a matrix A, B, C, D is just equal to A, D minus B, C, so we use that. And we get that this one is going to be this one times this, so you'll get zero for this AD component. And then we get zero for this one as well, so you get nothing in the I component. Again, the same happens for J. This one times this is zero, minus this one times this is still zero, so you get zero in that component. And then the K component, you get K times whatever the determinant of this is. So I didn't write this out very well, but it's the determinant of this minor here, which is uh, the determinant of this matrix here. Okay. Uh, so the determinant of that matrix is this is our A, this is our B, so we multiply those two together, ux, delta x, vy, delta y, minus um, vx, delta x, times uy, delta y. Okay, and um, so uh, the determinant is just equal to that without the... Uh, modulus brackets, but obviously uh, we want the size of this, we don't want this as a vector. At the moment, what this is, is, is it's a vector sticking out of the plane that's per perpendicular to this, basically. So it's coming out of the plane with a k component, and its size is equal to the size of the, uh, is equal to the area uh, spanned by those two vectors. So if we just take the modulus of this, we get that it's the modulus of ux delta x vy delta y minus vx uh, ui delta x delta y. So we'll pull out the delta x and the delta y from that and we get that this is delta x delta y times ux times vy minus vx times ui. Ui, like that.